Okay, here we go. Cheryl's ready. Let me go over this. I'll do a quick video. All right, let's go over the uh, the arrows first because it's very important you understand this. Blow this up a little bit. I'm going to move this chart over right now, guys. All right, so this arrow short on crude, right? There's a couple of characteristics that are very important about when this arrow comes up. This arrow is going to produce, based upon swings in the market, Fibonacci analysis, all right, supply and demand, and this is basically the structure of the market. It's an area where the market should reverse. The key important part about this arrow is look at the Rinko bar right here. Notice the Rinko bars are green and red, red being bias short, green being bias long. So what we want to do is if we got a thin line that comes up like this, that means there's a, that's an indecision bar. The buyers are equalizing the sellers. If trend is down and you see an arrow fire and you get an indecision bar like this, this is a great setup to go short because I got an indecision bar, not a red or green, an indecision bar with my arrow. You're going to see a lot of trades far off like this. It happens a lot in a lot of different markets. Be aware of that. That's going to help you cherry pick your arrows. If I go, uh, so make sure the arrow fires in decision bar. Now, you want to have market delta down here fire the same time. So you want a negative market delta down here under your delta bar, red, red delta bar. You want the red delta bar to fire exactly when the arrow fires. You want a negative market delta. If it's if the arrow fires with the indecision bar and it's positive market delta, positive market delta, positive market delta, you don't want to take the trade. You want to marry up the arrow and the indecision bar. It doesn't have to be an indecision bar. I'm just trying to see. I'll show you how to cherry pick them. An indecision bar, arrow, you're good to go. Your stop loss is going to be two ticks above the swing high on any market you trade. So let's say you, that you, you get in with this arrow short. Indecision bar, red market delta. Your stop loss is two ticks above that swing high. If it's two ticks above that swing high, what do we want to do? We want to enter the bar at the close of this indecision bar and negative market delta. So you'd open up the bar right here. Open up the trade at that open of that bar. What's your targets? Your first push, you should scale 50% of your contracts right here. That indecision bar on that counter move up told you you better bail contracts right there. So if you haven't bailed contracts by this indecision bar, you better bail at the close of that bar and then let the runner run. Go to the next one. This is a long side setup. Look, I had a indecision bar with the green arrow. What do you want? You want positive market delta, green bar down here right below it. Where do you open the trade up? You open the trade up. At the next bar, your stop loss is two ticks below that swing low. What I would do is I would adjust my stops based upon this two ticks above a swing high or swing low on any market you trade. What's your, what's your, what's your target? Scale 50% on the first push. A lot of traders like 8 to 10 ticks or 8 to 12 ticks, actually. And they like to let the runner run up to the next profile or symmetry dots, which we have. So the next setup. It's another indecision bar. Indecision bar, got the green arrow. Make sure you have positive market delta. What do you want to do? This is why you keep it two ticks below the swing low. Watch. You can get stopped out on this. If I put it right at the swing low, that would have been a stop out. I want to give a little wiggle room because sometimes the markets like to end top or W bottom. And if they like to end top or W bottom, I want two ticks below the swing low. Okay, you want positive market delta. Now, this trade is a short. There's an indecision bar. You want to look for the arrow, but now you want red market delta below you. If you turn red market delta and you get short, because it's an indecision bar with an arrow, and you get short with red market delta, if the next delta down here turns green, you better take a small loss, because it's probably going to break through the swing high. Okay, so that's how we like to trade these arrows, we like to look for an indecision bar is the ultimate setup 
with the arrow, with trend direction, with market buildup. Confirming. Do not, and I repeat, the system is not made to take arrows by themselves because they are areas of resistance or support. Not so much areas of support and resistance, let me clarify that. There are areas on a retracement and a swing that should reverse. Sometimes on larger time frames, you'll see it a lot. They'll call the session high and session low. They're very, very accurate. You just got to make sure that you use them in context with market delta. And I like marrying them up with market profile. But use the arrows. So all these swings, these trades today on crude, since last night, all these trades on crude, you must confirm with market delta. And I cannot stress that enough. Go over to gold, Gerald. Go over to gold, I'll shut this off in a second. This long on gold this morning, you'll notice there's an indecision bar. It's not red, it's not green, it's just a thin line. Buyers equalize the sellers. You want a positive market delta. Your stop loss is two ticks below the swing low. You take half off on the first push. If you do six contracts, scale 50% on the first push. I got symmetry dots. It's a one-time fee of $297 to use the scale. I like to go in hard trends. The third set of symmetry dots were up here. It actually hit the third set, I believe, almost to the tick. The third set, you want to go for third set of symmetry dots in trend markets, the second set of symmetry dots in non-trend. It's a one-time lifetime fee to scale if you don't want to scale. If you don't want the symmetry dots, just use an automated dome and trail your position. What I like to do on longer term time frames, how I do the DAX, I go two bars back on the DAX, my runner, and I look at the swing high if I'm shorting or swing low if I'm buying. If it closes above that swing, then I exit my position entirely on a larger time frame. But the DAX, I trade the 9 Simrinko because I get a lot of productive trades. And I'll show you how to do that in a second when we shut this video off because we had a lot of good trades like that in the DAX the last couple of days, trailing like that. But that's the key ingredients. I can't stress this enough. Use the market delta below to confirm your arrow entries above. And if you get a reversal bar like this on gold, like you did this morning on crude, if you get that, you know you're in a sweet spot trade. 